Madam Chair Lady of this session, Mr. Head of the Administrative Controls Authority of Egypt, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I stand on existing protocol to bring you greetings from the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, His Excellency Brigadier Julius Madia Biu, who has shown a commitment to fighting corruption and his economic development blueprints are predicated on a strong pillar of fighting corruption conscientiously and to reform the environment to succeed in this fight. In that regard, since he came to power um, just over a year ago, in April 2018, a lot has been done. The Anti-Corruption Commission has been strengthened and uh, our efforts against corruption has led to uh, the recovery of, of over $2, two, $2 million worth of stolen assets for the country. Conviction rates for corruption offenses has increased by nearly 200%. And uh, we have a special court for corruption, and there is generally zero tolerance for the fight against corruption. All this is happening because we in Sierra Leone understand the cost that corruption has on the country, but more generally, the cost of corruption on Africa. In Africa, countries are battling with corruption in all directions. Corruption undermines the rule of law. It leads to breakdown of peace and order, and generally leads to a degradation of the living conditions of its citizens. In 2005, Dreher and Hasfield estimate that an increase in corruption by just about 1% reduces the GDP of any country by 0.13%. Similarly, it reduces the GDP per capita of that country by $425. The socioeconomic and political cost of corruption is huge. The control risk group estimated in 2011 that developing countries lost close to one trillion to fraud, corruption, and shady business deal, and particularly most of that is in Africa. According to the Mo Ibrahim Index, corruption costs Africa 148 billion per annum, which is equivalent to 50 percent of the tax revenue and 25 percent of the entire African GDP. This is why we have to fight corruption as a continent like our lives depend on it. That is because it does depend on it. We struggle with the basic things that the world has forgotten. Poverty. How do we feed ourselves? Electricity. Water supply. Maternal death. Child death. These are all things that if we fight corruption, we'll have the resources, the architecture, to fight and control. In that regard, countries have set up institutions to fight corruption, like Sierra Leone, we have the Anti-Corruption Commission. It was mostly predicated on IMF conditionalities or World Bank loan conditions that these institutions have to exist. They have been there, some have been there for 20 years, 16 years, 18 years, 10 years as the case may be. The success rate is low. Is low. Every year, the Corruption Perception Index that comes from Transparency International shows that Africa is not making much progress in the fight against corruption. Why? That is why forums like this is useful for us to sit back, think deep down the sanctum sanctorum of our beliefs, and plunge out with solutions that we can do to solve Africa's problem. Our resources, for example, are in deep trouble. The Becky report on Africa, the African Progress Report, which has been named, the Becky Report estimated that over 50 billion is lost to illicit financial flows and tax evasions by Africa. That means between 1970 and 2008, we lost 900 billion, 900 billion dollars to corruption. In terms of food, Kofi Annan did warn, may his soul rest in peace, that Africa is going to sow, to, to harvest, a bitter harvest, if we do not address the problem of corruption. Today, as a result of that bitter harvest, 
we lose 34 billion worth of food. We have hungry stomachs everywhere and they are standing on fertile soils. We need an estimated 50 billion annually to do our, our roads and other public investments. The progress report also estimated that Africa loses about 17 billion annually from illicit logging, wild fishing fleets, flouting international conventions, are costing West Africa alone 1.3 billion annually. In terms of food security, in a report titled Western Africa's Fishing Missing Fish, Britain's Overseas Development Institute estimates that Africa loses billion dollars because African states have not put in place sufficient measures to control the harvesting of their own fish. The Food and Agricultural Organization estimates that in 2014, Africa got 400 million from fishing rights. But in theory, we could generate $3.3 billion if Africa were to export its own fish. All these statistics are there to show us that we are not harnessing our resources properly. We are not dealing with them properly. As a matter of fact, we need people to come and tell us what to do with our resources. We need to do something about it now as a continent. We need to do something about it now as countries. We need to do something about it as leaders and people representing our countries. Solving this problem is not an easy one. But we have to start now if we have not already started. If Singapore, for example, could change itself from a mere fishing village to a gateway or western metropolis for business in Asia, if even in Africa countries like Rwanda, Mauritius, Cape Verde are making progress in developing their countries to standards that are respectable, why can't we do the same in Africa? Why can't we do the same in our respective countries? But in doing this, we are ignoring a population that is really important to the future of Africa, the youth. It is estimated that Africa has a population of about 1.2 billion. Over 60% of that population is its youth, people below the age of 35. Now look around you in this room. How many of that age bracket is represented in this room today? Therefore, when we have discussions like these, we are leaving out an important aspect of Africans' growth, the future. So when we live here, we take away what will not grow in the future because the youth who make up 60% of the population are not well represented. And this is not because Egypt did not want to represent them, but countries are not appointing young people in positions enough. We have to do something about it. We have to develop educational curricula across the continent that take into consideration young people and their ability to succeed. Children have to be taught corruption. We have to include it in our syllabuses. We have to educate our people. We have to include them in the discussions so that they can remain as the population that will take Africa to where it is to go in 2063. We have to harness our resources well. We have to make sure that we are not considered the continent that is poor and miss plenty. We can build our own schools, equip our own hospitals with the best brains, best equipment and medicines, and develop it without waiting for China or the West to assist us. Now is the time to make that positive change. I will call on all of us to push for that difference. Let us make it happen. Where else can victory be harvested for Africa, if not from us? We have to make it happen. The positive difference that Africa needs is what lies in all of us, to fight corruption like our lives depend on it. I thank you all.